due to the COVID-19 uh, crisis, all classes are they're planning to move all classes to some sort of distance learning, whether it's going to be Blackboard for majority of the courses or and probably some other online tools. But uh, so far, Blackboard is the learning management uh, systems that we have at the university. So uh, there's a big chance that uh, most of your uh, instructors will be using it. Uh, so since you guys are already familiar with Blackboard, you know the best way to access it, you go to cuny.edu on your browser and and you click under login here, Blackboard, you, and you enter your CUNY login information. For example, I'm using mine. Hopefully I entered the right last oh, one. So once you're in there, this is basically what we call the home page. It gives you access to all the courses on the left side. These are the courses you are registered for. And on the right side here, there's something called my organizations. Like most students, they are required to take SPARC, which is the sexual harassment training. Uh, so those will be listed here. I like have tons of courses. Okay. If you see a course where it says not currently available, it will be grayed out for you since I have full admin access and that grayed out, which means your instructor has to take action to make the course available for you. You will see it, but you won't be able to access it. Okay? So therefore, the instructions here, if you see the course there and then it's grayed out, you need to contact your instructor to ask them when they're planning on making the course available. Okay. Once you registered in uh, CUNY first for course for the semester, it should be automatically able to access into uh, or see it in Blackboard until the instructor makes it available. 24 hours you registered for it. So if you register for it tonight, by tomorrow, you should be able to see the course listed. But now to enter the course and see the content that's in there, that uh, upon an action from the instructor, which means the instructor has to make it available for you. Okay? Um, the other piece is the fact that most instructors tend to take time to load content into the course because the course is empty in Blackboard when you first create it. Then after that, the instructor has to put the content, set up the assignment, the lectures for you guys so you guys can go and read the content, submit it, assignment, participate in discussion board, etc. So usually it takes them a while to set it up and then you can email your instructor to make sure that uh, being taken care of, okay? One of the other key actions that are required for users, basically by users, I mean students and instructor to do when you're first logging into Blackboard is to look for this, uh, have a bunch of courses, mine, so this section that says tool. Under here, here there's something called, you're gonna see update email. Please make sure where it says your current email address is that you have the right email address listed here. Cause uh, most, uh, students and faculty, they tend to be associated to more than one CUNY campus. So therefore, the email address that is posted could be not, uh, could be not the one they are actually using. So therefore, you have to make sure that you have the right email address listed here. If it's not the case, all you have to just type the email address in there. But it has to be a uh, CUNY email address. It cannot be Gmail, Hotmail, cannot be any third party email address. It has to be like your SLU3 email. That's the one that will go there. Once you enter it up here, then you confirm it here. You click on submit. You will get a notification from that email say, hey, your email address has been updated to whatever you put it in. It is important to make sure that you have the right email address listed in Blackboard because when an instructor sending communication within a course, meaning they post a, a course material, they send email or notification, that's the email address that will be used for you to receive that communication. So if you have the incorrect email address, you will never be able to receive uh, that kind of communication. So it's more important when you first log into Blackboard, look for the tools. Most of you wouldn't have such a long list. Uh, look for this. We, it is usually located right here in the middle for most students. But if you don't see it, all you have to just scroll down and you'll see there. And then where it says update email address, you go and update email, your email addresses. Any questions so far? We're good? 
All right. So now let's go into a course. Okay. Um, take student review mode. So once you click on the course, you basically enter what you call the entry point of the course. Uh, most courses are set, the entry point is set to the announcement. That's where your instructor will be posted the announcement. And those announcements where they're posted, it triggers an email that goes to your email address. So that's another reason you need to have the right email address uh, in Blackboard. So every time an instructor posts an announcement, it sends an email address to you as the student. And most courses basically uh, have the entry point set as announcement, but sometimes the instructor might change it to something else. It's up to the instructor, but usually by default at the announcement. And on the left side here, this is what we call the course navigation menu. This is a template for most SLU courses. At the bottom here, you have what you call SLU resources. You have, if you click on it, there's a link to the writing center that you can access information. The library, a link to the library, so you can get information on student services, which is uh, uh, the page here at SLU for Student Services Center. And uh, the support portal, which means you can create a ticket right to the service desk and uh, for any issues you have. Okay, so all those links are in your courses under student resources. Now, course tools. Those are basically tools that are being used in the uh, course. As a student, uh, when if you submit an assignment and the instructor put, uh, grade that assignment already, you can click here under my grade, you will see your grades. And if the instructor puts any comments in the, uh, in that, uh, to the associated to the assignment, you will see it listed there also. So this is a quick view so you can see your grade for every single assignment that you've done in the course, okay? And we come back to collaborate uh, later on. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is the course navigation menu. Uh, by default, once again, the instructor can change the course structure, meaning uh, instead of having like a weekly readings and assignment, the instructor can have a, a weekly readings or just put everything in one uh, area, just course information. It depends how the instructor builds the course. But anything you want, let's say when you first enter the course, if you don't see what you're looking for here, go to the navigation menu and click on every single folder to see where the instructor pulls uh, that content for you. But by default, and uh, we had a session with the instructors yesterday to tell them how to organize the course so we make it easier for you students to be able to navigate through it. So, and we have discussion board, which is another interactive way that we encourage instructor to use so we can interact with you. Mostly now, since you no longer gonna have that face-to-face -face interaction, it's best to communicate to your instructor and also your peers. Therefore, using the discussion board, it's a, a good way you stay in contact with your peers and doing work together. This is a sample of discussion board. And as more instructors planning on building their courses for the next week, so they can be ready by the 19th, they're planning on using some of them. Uh, the other piece I want to bring to your attention is what you call video conferencing. In Blackboard, we have a default tool called Blackboard Collaborate. Uh, this is the tool that I'm actually using now. If anyone is on the call, this is it, since I'm the only one now, they can see my screen. So we encourage the instructors to start using these tools to have like synchronous and asynchronous uh, uh, conference with you guys. Meaning, in, say, since you made, uh, let's say, on Monday from 6 to 8, if they decide to have that face-to-face -face but virtually with you guys, they can use that. And it's basically like any video chat conference that they will be able to see you. Let me go back to this one. The reason we have the, uh, the funnel here is because I'm sharing my screen from something that's already being shared. So it goes in infinite loop. So basically you will see the instructor content in this area. This is where you can send messages to everybody in the room. Since I'm the only one, you don't see, uh, you don't see anyone else. This shows you a list of uh, folks who in the, that conference with you guys. And these are tools for the instructors so that they can share their screen with you, do polling, they can ask a question and then ask you guys to answer the question and do a poll, how many people got it wrong, how many people got it right. 
timer and break out room where they can group all you guys in different group to work together doing that session. And at the same time, if you have a camera enable, let me see if I enable this one. Hello. Yeah, video. Oh yeah, this is the camera. Okay. Now, so if you have the camera enable, you will be able to see the people, the way it works with your voice is follow your voice. If person A is talking, that's the person face that will show on the screen and person B and so and so. So that's why it's enabled. Okay. And these tools, uh, you don't need any software. You can use it on your cell phone or tablet. It's a uh, browser based, whether it's using your uh, Chrome or Firefox. These are the two uh, web browsers we suggest people to use because uh, it makes it easier. Those are WebTC enabled. Uh, Edge, Microsoft Edge is new. They're still developing. It's working with it, but it's not really smooth. And uh, forget uh, Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is not good. So if you can use it with Chrome and Firefox. So, so for any questions about Collaborate? I don't have the video Yeah, because your teacher didn't enable it. Yeah. So therefore, if they're planning on using it, they will enable put a link for you or enable it some. For example, in this course, uh, where is it? On the weekly assignment for week two, no, week one probably. Week one. These are the tasks that you have to do week one. You have to read the syllabus and ask any questions. And then there's a discussion board which is this one where you have to create a thread using yourself, introduce yourself, and the instructor provides some sort of uh, guideline what to do. And then the last part of the work you have to do is that there's a collaborate session which you're gonna have to follow. So basically that's, a, uh, once again, each instructor will design the course how, as a uh, fit them, so you, in one course, you might have certain tools, certain things you have to do, and the other, you don't have anything to do. It's just like a paper or reading. It depends on the class and the instructor. But these are the basic tools that's available to everybody. If they're planning on using, they're using. There's another tool that they license here. It's Zoom, and some of the faculty are planning on using it also. It's another video conference tool. So that one is straight video conferencing that uh, I think some of the faculty who plan on using it is uh, uh, for the scheduled classes. Therefore, if they had classes with you guys, let's say on Monday from 6 to 8, so from 6 to 8, they're just going to be using the Zoom for video conferencing. So you guys going to be at home or wherever you are and then have the uh, class and that will be it. Okay. Any questions? Concerns. Uh, okay. In terms of assignments, um, this is a little tricky uh, because the instructor have to first create the assignment. And you, as a student, you follow the instructions, you click the assignment. But something that tends to be sometimes, uh, oh, I will upload an assignment. I don't have to clear this. All right. Okay, let's go back. So, when you're uploading the uh, when you're uploading the assignment, you have to make sure that uh, okay assignment. Once you click on it, you file whatever instructions the instructor. You see where it says write submissions. Don't use that because this is basically will open a text box for you right here on Blackboard and you type it. Let's say you're doing on your laptop, you were at work and then you decide to go home. You lose it. Okay. So I, the best way to do that is to type your assignment in Microsoft Word. Save it on your computer and then when you're ready to submit it, you click on browse like you do for anything, either it's on, on Jump Drive, you can save it on your cloud, whether it's Dropbox, OneDrive, whatever, OneNote, whatever you're using, and then you can do. This also gives you option to browse your Dropbox, any kind of cloud storage. But if it's on your computer on your Jump Drive, browse my computer, select the file, and then open, and then you submit it. 
And once you submit, the instructor should be able to see it uh, and read it. Once you submit, let me see if I have found this computer. Oh, there's nothing. Okay, there's no file. Once you submit the file, it will give you a preview of what you submitted. So this way you know it's done, and on your email you receive a confirmation with an ID associated with that file. So if the instructor sets the assignment to allow multiple attempts, which means you can submit the paper more than once, therefore every time you submit it, you're gonna receive a uh, confirmation email with a different ID. So each time you upload that assignment, to the assignment tool, it assigns an ID to it. That's in case if anything happens to it, you can use that to track back and then troubleshoot whatever's causing the problem with your assignment. And you can create your assignment. Uh, it supports all type of uh, Word, Excel, Access, uh, Google Docs, uh, PDF, all, everything I can think of, except EPUB, like uh, the e-readers format. But anything, when, since you guys have uh, access to Office 365, so you all have uh, Microsoft Word, so therefore, Word, you use it. Okay? Any questions about assignments? I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, my professor normally wants us to, 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 normally I write it on Microsoft Word, mm -hmm. and my art professor wants us to paste it there, and that location there. My problem is when I paste it, the, the format, it gets all messed up. So yeah. When you write it in uh, Microsoft Word and then you paste it here, usually you lose the formatting if you use like uh, what you call stroke keys. You have to make sure that m you don't use the formatting from Microsoft Word when you paste it and then you fix it here. If you use like a tabs, when you paste it here, you, that's not gonna be able to process here. So you're gonna have to use the break or the space for the tab, okay? Uh, well, I'm not sure why your instructor wants you to paste it here. Yeah, she said it's more convenient for her to just look at it instead of clicking the attachment. Oh, uh, the problem is, is she probably didn't set it as an assignment. Uh, let me see if I have a file on my jump drive. Okay, you know what? Let me find a file on Google. I'm gonna show you how it's gonna work. Go back to that course. Okay. For example, this is the file. Let me download it. Uh, save. All right. So the assignment. Now I'm gonna upload it. I'm not gonna write, paste it there. I'm gonna browse my computer and download. This is the file, just the, assuming this is your assignment in PDF instead of Word, but Word is the best way to. So once you click uh, Submit, it's loading it. You see, it gives me the preview here. And your instructor, let me, I'm gonna log out. This is the student preview I'm using as a student, and let me, now go back as an instructor. Now as an instructor, when I go here on the grade center, full grade center, this is the, uh, the student preview account I used to load. You see, it says need gradings here, which means you submitted your assignment, I have to grade it. The instructor, all she has to do, click on attempt, the same preview you had, that the same preview your instructor has. They can say it. She can decide to download it if she wants to. You understand? She can use the tool here to mark anything she wants. She can add comment here. It gives her a, a comment box. And she can also here add more comments. Okay? She had more comments here. And she has another option. I think it's here. Oh, where is it? Here. Come on where she can even record a video or audio, comment, leave it by. It's only five minutes, okay? That's all the options they have, okay? So 
paste it doesn't make it easier for her to read it. It just might, she has to set it the right way so she can have access to it. Because this, uh, this gives her a history of the assignment. And once she grades it here, let's see, I put five, submit. As you see, I added some comments here, submit. Okay, the grades here. Now I'm going back to the student view. As a student, when I go under my grades, see, this is the assignment, and I know I have a comment. Okay, so the tool is there just by doing, uh, using it the right way. Okay, so hopefully after the session yesterday, some of the instructor goes back and fix the course and use the tool the right way so we can get better feedback. Okay. Any other question? Mm, use it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Perfect. Um, it's mobile friendly, which means you can access it on your mobile devices, such as your phone. There's an app for it. But in terms of assignment, I suggest that you use a laptop or desktop for the assignment, because if you're doing it on your phone, you lose connection and then you might tend to lose your assignment. And it's not, sometimes the phone resolution is not that great. So it's best like if you're planning on doing an assignment to use a laptop. It doesn't mean you cannot use your phone or your tablet if that's what you have, but if you have a, a, the option to choose the laptop versus uh, the phone, it's best to do that. Network connection is very critical, especially when you're using Collaborate, that video conferencing. Uh, if you're in a poor area, you may not be able to stay connected, so you get disconnected and reconnected, get disconnected and reconnected. And also, if you're submitting an assignment, if you lose a uh, uh, network connection, it's going to lock, it, uh, lock you down. Like I mentioned earlier, the instructor has the option to set the assignment, whether you do one attempt, that's it or you have multiple attempts. So if it's one attempt, once you lose network connection, that's it. It uh, basically submitted the assignment for you or whatever transaction you were doing is closed. Therefore, the instructor has to go and we enable it so you can submit. If multiple attempts, that's when you have a second chance to submit it again. Okay, so that, these are things to take into consideration when you're using a mobile device because your network connection is very critical, okay? All right. Any other questions? Anything at all? How about your experience um, since you're using it? Well, I've never used the video chat mm -hmm. before, but I've submitted like, um, papers on it, um, discussion boards and things like that. Okay. Quizzes on, on Blackboard. And so, yeah. Okay. Oh, great. And you. Uh, all right. So if there's no more question, I think that's it because there's nobody online and you guys are the only two here. All right. Thank you for coming. Thank you so All right, thanks. You're welcome. So in regards to Zoom, that's something that the instructor will give us the information on. Yeah, I think they have some training sessions on next week. Okay. I'm not sure if they have any for students who probably will receive an email, but the instructor is the one they're going to give you instructions because with blackboard you already your accounts already there you already enroll in the course in the zoom the instructor has to set it up set up the sessions and send the invite with the link for you etc so that's something they're gonna be working on okay, okay? So all right you're welcome and if you have any questions in problem uh, you can contact the help desk and then they will create a ticket assign it to me and I'll, uh, take care of it okay all right thank you